This video is sponsored by Audible and the incredible audiobooks that you can find over at audible.com. A lot of you might know that I am part of Adeptus Ridiculous, a Warhammer 40k podcast for new people, along with my co host DK Diamantes and Supreme Overlord and editor Quiet Shy. Not only do we talk about Warhammer weekly, but we also do a book club every single month on 40k books, and we always recommend Audible for them every single time. So far, we have covered the Necron book, Infinite and the Divine. We've also covered the Imperial Guard book, Gaunt's Ghosts. And now we're working on Soul Hunter, which is my biggest recommendation and one of my favorite 40k books of all time. Soul Hunter is the first in a trilogy of books regarding the 8th Legion of the Night Lords Chaos Space Marines, written by Aaron Dembski bowden and narrated by Andrew Wincott. And he does a stellar job at bringing these characters to life and his incredible voice acting really carries the audiobook. These books are so good, they have gotten me to start a Night Lord's Army myself. And if you would like to listen to this fantastic trilogy or the two that I mentioned earlier, visit audible.com slash bricky or text bricky to 500 500. Thank you very much for sponsoring this video and let's get into Frostpunk. Hello everybody, my name is Bricky, currently running from the law for dressing up like an owl. The response to my Frostpunk video was incredible, it's not my highest viewed video in the world, but everyone seemed like they really enjoyed it, I really enjoyed making it, and so I want to ride that high of validation and create another one on one of their DLCs, The Last Autumn. The Last Autumn is one of the two major expansion packs for Frostpunk, and it is the far superior one. You are a subordinate of the IEC, and you are creating a generator over on Site 113 to house the people of Liverpool, and if all of that went right over your head, let me explain. The IEC is a Chad company. Why do I say this? Because they are literally listed as a Chad company on the wiki. What is Site 113? Well, it's one of the sites to build the generator at, so you can house the people when the Great Frost comes. What's Liverpool? Well, it's a fictional quarantine zone meant to house any kind of football fan that's a menace to society, which is most of them. Say the line, England! First and most evident, cold is not a factor. The Great Frost hasn't come yet, and so you are having a beautiful, toasty 10 degrees Celsius, or what an Arizonian will call mild hypothermia for most of the game. So your workforce actually won't be getting sick from the cold. And also, you don't have to deal with discontent and hope, you now have to deal with discontent and motivation. This is not a game about survival, this is a game about time. The motivation meter actually carries with it positives and negatives, unlike the old hope meter. If motivation gets to the highest level, that third pip right there, your entire workforce is 30% more efficient, which is huge. They're 0% more efficient, just normal in the middle, and they're 30% less efficient at the bottom. Now, this doesn't mean you're not going to be doing your usual stuff for the rest of the game. You're still going to be gathering coal, wood, steel, steam cores, food, all that kind of stuff, but how you go about it is drastically different. You start off with, you know, your usual gatherings. You got lots of things like steel and coal piles and wood all around your work site, and you're going to start gathering that stuff up, but soon you will run out. And the first big change is actually going to be to food. Food is relied on foraging teams, which are kind of like Giga Scout Chads and Outpost teams combined. They're groups of workers that you send out to go find different areas that might be full of food, like a lake full of fish or a herd of reindeer, and then you can go ahead and create an outpost there, and they'll constantly send back food like an old outpost team. As for the rest, you still have tons of trees around you for sawmills and the like, but the main Main difference is that all of your unlimited buildings are all gone. There are no coal mines, there are no steelworks, there are no wall drills. Anything that had just an unlimited resource generation is no longer there. This has all been replaced by the docks. Now there are four spots where you can place docks. This is also including the fishing docks as well. So if you want to go ahead and have regular docks or food docks, you have to kind of mix and match. The docks are a special building that will constantly bring in resources of one of three types coal, steel, or wood. They then take all that material and then load it out into giant piles, which you can then collect afterwards, either with using gathering posts 
or special reloading stations, which are way faster, but haha, <laughs> guess what? Steam core cost. Lastly, what about Steam cores and new workers? Well, that is another awesome change the last autumn, the telegraph station. You are a formal employee. You are formally employed by a big company. So you can use the telegraph station to request supplies depending on your logistical limit and what they offer to you. These supplies are either workers, engineers, steam cores, and prosthetics once you get the law signed. And they also have different varying like logistical limits depending on what you want. Workers, super cheap and easy. Prosthetics, not too hard either. Engineers, you can only have a few of them compared to workers and you can have barely a single steam core with every single shipment. Every single 24 hours, this thing will come over and the moment it arrives, you can send out another telegraph with a small logistical limit that increases the longer you wait. So resources are now complete. How do you build the generator? Well, the generator is starting off in just a gigantic pit and it is in the big center point of the map in a little circle where you can't actually build normal buildings at. The creation of the generator is the ticking clock aspect of this DLC. You have a schedule and if you're able to finish the generator ahead of schedule, great for you, very good to hear. But if you can't and you consistently miss deadlines, you'll get fired. And that's basically the way to lose the game, very similar to being exiled in the base game. Now, Generator Completion has an entire workshop tab, and there are four main buildings that you build in order to create the generator, with three of them entirely being dedicated to resource creation. These buildings will create things like structural profiles, steam exchangers, all different kinds of materials out of wood, steel, and then steel and coal, respectively. However, like I mentioned in my main video, this is the 1800s, and you are running an 18 1800s workforce and that's dangerous workplace safety is now a tangible stat where your people would get sick and injured from the cold in the prior game now the sick and injury part comes from workplace safety this can become more and more dangerous depending on multiple factors the length of the work shift there's also whether or not you're doing safety procedures to work slower but safer whether you're using profiles to help with the building or if you're venting out the toxic gas that spews from the generator site. Yes, that's the fourth building, the ventilation, which guess what? Uses coal. You thought you could escape the coal gang? The coal life never leaves. When you finally actually get to work on the generator itself though, it is a monumental task. The amount of workers that you can throw at this is just massive. And things are absolutely going to go wrong. But that's when the DLC really starts to shine because how you make this thing safer and how you're able to consistently create the giant generator is entirely up to you. Did you have more structural profiles that you didn't need? Well, great, you can use them to increase the safety of the actual workplace. Did you have more steel exchangers or steam exchangers? Those things can actually be used to auto advance the entire generator construction, which is really handy. Motivation high, good, 30% speed. Speed increase. You didn't think that just because there was no coal, this was going to be easy, right? No, no, it's not. You think that Frostpunk just happens to be going through its goth green phase right now? You think it's going to be easy? Workplace motivation is a lot like hope, obviously, where you have to fight it against discontent. The difference, though, is that not only is it tied to the actual efficiency of your workplace, but it is also a ticking clock event because you're out in the middle of buttfuck nowhere. It's raining. It's cold, cold-ish. Not as cold as it's going to be. And things are rough for these workers. And workers are superstitious people, too. Motivation will fall every single day and it will not stop and you need to find a way to counteract that honestly everything from the meals they eat to having a place to wash to owls which you can provide an appropriate response to motivation is going to start to fall motivation falls each morning so how do you counteract that laws of course and the laws have been retuned for a labor force because instead of adaptation 
you now have administration. Administration is mainly used to work with motivation and reduce discontent. A lot of the laws from the main game are here, but sometimes they're tweaked around a little bit. Medical laws are pretty similar, but you can actually do something instead of making a snow pit, you can actually just send their dead back to London, which helps with motivation and reduce discontent. Food can become hearty and give them more motivation. You know what? Just bring out the fucking cocaine. Why not? Just give them some cocaine pills. Hey, if it worked for the Germans, it'll work for me. On the other side, though, from administration, you also have labor. And labor is all about how you manage the workplace, either through efficiency or safety. You can actually create shorter shifts than normal, which will increase safety, but you know, shorter shifts. You can do those safety shifts that I mentioned earlier, which are better, but they are also a little bit lower in terms of efficiency. You can also do the opposite. You can do longer shifts and you can also do 24 hour shifts, but not in the old way, in the idea of you have the night shift and the day shift and they have to swap. But because of that, you actually are going to need far more workers in order to get that done. But you're not here for that. No, you're here for the moral dilemma. You want to see how quickly you can become a monster in this game, just like in Frostpunk. And oh boy, do I have great news for you. Out of all of my praise for Frostpunk, the one major fault I had was that order and faith not that different. The Last Autumn rectifies this by basing it on how you want to run your workplace. You either have engineers or workers, and you need to decide who you want to lean on when it comes to workplace safety and efficiency. Picking workers will actually have you create the workers union, and it'll allow you to help with things like getting the motivation up, making the workers happy, and also reducing strikes. Yeah people can go on strike. And you know what that means? The workplace will simply not function. Rising discontent, that increases your strike chance. Bad workplace safety, that increases your strike chance. Give them double or triple rations. Give them the whole rest of the day off. Sign a law. You gotta do something to get them off strike. And almost every time, it's a pain in the ass. So, if you want to help out the workers and side with the workers union, well, awesome. Happy workers means fewer strikes. On the other side, you have the engineers. And the engineers are the brain of the operation. You know, they're the smart ones. They have the degrees. They have the plans. They know how this works. They're very good at maintaining efficiency and safety. Unfortunately, sometimes they can be kind of stuffy assholes because they consider themselves higher ups. They're actually very good at assisting with safety and efficiency with the factory inspectorate, or you can have foremen that go around check them, check on people. But obviously, no one likes being told what to do. So sometimes if you give the engineers too much power, your strike risk will go up. And of course, this is the low tier of laws. This is the early part before things start to get a little bit more worrying. What's that? Abolition of privileges. Engineers can be employed anywhere at lower efficiency, but anywhere. Ooh, propaganda time. Ooh, <clears throat> let's take a listen. Free man and slave, patrician and plebeian, lord and serf, guild master and journeyman, in a word, Oppressor and oppressed stood in constant hey, opposition hey, to one get another. Get away from that. Who is you in here? The people's militia. Let the people police our workforce. Let them provide a show of force to any troublemakers. Let them- Oh fuck, go back! A healthy society must be free of parasites. For the good of the masses, enemies of the working class will be executed and made an example of. Soviet National Anthem .exe base boosted .mp3. This really caught me off guard. One person, probably engineers, will be executed every single morning and motivation will skyrocket all the way to the top every single morning. The thing is though, I had to do this on my first playthrough. Motivation is tied to efficiency and I was slacking so hard. I was behind schedule, things weren't working out well, I was low on food, I was low on resources. I needed the motivation increase and guess what? I still lost and this scenario ramps up. It is horrendously deceptive. While the fall of Winter Home might be the hardest of them all, the last autumn lures you into this nice sense of security. Oh, there's no weather problems. You know, the cold's not here. Things are going fine. But it will ramp the fuck up with time, and it gets really difficult. Once the deception wears off, that death bell will chime. Oh, will it chime? But seeing this 
brutal and unique way that you eventually become like a fear-mongering communist workforce. It got me so curious and interested. What's the engineer side gonna be like? And to my surprise, it's worse. Overseers, increase workplace efficiency, but a higher chance of strike. That eh, makes sense. Security outposts, make sure that the workplaces are safe. Or, you know, so they say. Class segregation, engineers live in their own lodges, which will heavily increase their motivation. Okay, you're getting a little worse now. Strike busting, armed guards and armed engineers will go out to get rid of strikes, and people will be hurt by this. Oh goody, a penal colony. Cheap labor, and you don't even need to worry about workplace safety. They're criminals, just make them work. Rationalize healthcare. Convicts don't need the same healthcare that us engineers and workers need, and if they die, that's fine. Just throw them into the foundations of the generator. Roundups, turn workers who were troublemakers into convicts and throw them into the penal colony. And finally, servitude. Look at this fucking haunting image. It's a labor camp. You get to create a labor camp. You have an ability called forced labor. You build a panopticon. I'm sorry, but I'm a little curious what the higher ups are gonna say when I telegraph them for some more workers and when they're finally arriving, they see work makes you free on my fucking gates. Hell, listen to the shift sounds. It's so grim. This, admittedly, I think is really cool because it's so incredibly dark. I haven't wanted to make a labor camp since release date February 11th, 2013, and the fact they had the titanium balls to go that far, it completely matches the ideology that I believe that the creators of Frostpunk tend to have, which is everything in moderation. It shows what happens when you go too far. And what I love is how it gets under your skin as the player, because you know this is the end of the world. You know that the world is about to enter a new ice age and humanity, as far as you're concerned, if you do not finish this generator, might as well go extinct. You're constantly battling with the moral and pragmatic parts of your mind because unfortunately for all of us, no one's going to care about all of my morals when I am a pile of bones under 10 feet of ice. Especially when the gameplay mechanics themselves, the work safety, and especially the motivation are tied to the efficiency of your workplace and the weight of what you are doing. It'll force you down these incredibly dark paths faster than you ever thought you would. And that I think is fucking awesome. You must see with eyes unclouded by hate. See the good in that which is evil and the evil in that which is good. Pledge yourself to neither side, but vow instead to preserve the balance that exists between the two. Quote from Miyazaki, director of Armored Core 2. And that's what makes this DLC so incredibly good. The insane moral dilemma between all the laws, the workers and the engineers, the classism, as well as how hard it ramps up. Because you might think you're doing fine, you might think you're doing great, but then when the cold finally arrives, when your docks freeze, when your foragers can't hunt anymore, and when the death bell is chiming, you're gonna have to make some really hard decisions. Huge recommendation, entirely worth the money, great spin on the main game. I think even utilizes some of the mechanics better than the main game, but it's just not quite as long, and also it's a little bit less expansive, but still 100% worth the money. Frostpunk is an amazing game. Get it if you have the money and the chance to do so. If you do, play the main one. If you love it, get Last Autumn. If you like it, get Last Autumn. It is such a good way, and I wanna see more labor force ideas from this developer. I think they have a great grasp on it, and I think that the idea of managing a workforce in this way, like this intimate way, is something I don't see very often in games in general. And I think it's actually a really untapped market to see how you can run as like a manager to other people and see how you think and, and the ideas you have in your head. I think it's a really good idea. Huge recommendation from me. If you want to get yourself some bricky merchandise like the one I'm currently wearing, there's a backside too, check out orchidate.com or the link in the description. As for all the names on the screen, you are my patrons, you are my YouTube members. If you want to become either of those and support me, I would appreciate you wholeheartedly.
wholeheartedly. And thank you to all of them who are currently supporting me right now. You are all fantastic. And let me answer some real questions this time. Bungus or War Banner? So long as it's not Daisy, I'll take whatever. What's a game, movie, show, or possibly book that you wish you could have enjoyed the first time knowing less than you already did? A Schindler's List. It's a, one of the best movies I think ever made, and the ending literally gives me horrible, ugly man tears every time I watch it. But I already knew the story. I wish I just knew nothing about Oscar Schindler and was just shown the movie. I think it would have had so much more weight to it. Ricky, what is your workout music and why is not the Doom Eternal OST? Oh, please. Listen, Doom Eternal is great, but there is nothing that'll get me more swole than listening to Bury the Light while at the gym, all right? All right, everyone. I'll see you in the next video. Thank you so much for your patience.